Welcome back to Overthinking Tech. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to take a Raspberry Pi Zero W and set it up to be a smart speaker controlled by Logitech Media Server. To do this, you're going to need a couple of things, including a Raspberry Pi Zero W. Uh, this process does also work on a standard Raspberry Pi. The only difference between this video and my Raspberry Pi Pi Core Player video is that I'm going to show you how to set up the wireless connection when installing Pi Core Player. For this, I'm also going to use... Whoop. Now for this, I just have this set of these cheap desktop speakers. Uh, these guys actually just run directly off of a USB header. So I will be using a little micro USB to full-size USB adapter plugged into the OTG or on-the-go USB port on this guy. Because this doesn't have a 3.5 millimeter output or any sort of DAC, you're going to need some way to plug speakers in. You can either go with USB speakers like what I have, or you can just get a USB DAC and then plug that into this port. The other thing you're going to need is a micro SD card with Pi Core Player installed. If you need help installing Pi Core Player, check out my first video on setting up Pi Core Player. Uh, in this video, I'm going to assume you already have it installed, so let's jump into how to set up Wi-Fi. Plugging in our micro SD card with Pi Core Player, we just need to navigate to the root directory, and you should have a text document titled WPA underscore supplicant.conf.sample. And we are just going to rename this to get rid of the dot sample at the end. Yes, Windows, I do mean to change the file extension. If you don't have this file, then you can just create one with this same file name. Opening this, most of this is just a comment here uh, explaining what this is. All we actually care about is this little bit at the bottom where we're defining the network. So for this, we just need to enter the SSID of our Wi-Fi network, as well as the password. Chances are the key management should already be correct. Uh, most home Wi-Fi is going to use WPA-PSK for security. If your network doesn't, that's something you might have to change, but that's going to be on a user-by-user -user basis. So I can't tell you what you need to change yours to. We're going to make sure we save this, and that's it. When we boot this up, we should be able to find this device on our Wi-Fi network. So I've got my micro SD card installed and my Raspberry Pi Zero W here. And if you're unfamiliar with these, you have two micro USB ports on them, but they are not the same. The one on, I don't know if this is going to be the right or the left of the video, uh, the, the one closest to my finger right now that I'm tapping at, that's your power connection. And then the other one is marked as a USB connection on this. Uh, so it just says USB. When we plug in the speakers or your DAC or whatever you're using to run your speakers here, you're going to want to make sure that they're plugged into the USB one. And then your power one obviously goes into the one that's labeled power in. I've got the Raspberry Pi powered on with the speakers connected as well. And now we can start looking for it. Now there's a few ways you can do this. Uh, you can use the mini HDMI port on the Raspberry Pi, plug it into a monitor, and then it will display its IP address. What I'm going to do instead is just come here and look for its IP address. So everybody's system is going to look different but we should be able to see a new Pi Core player device show up at some point. And just like that, we see the PCP device come through. Feels like a name that maybe they should find a way to change. Taking that IP address, we'll get the user interface for our Pi Core player. And there's a couple of things here we want to check before we're ready to use this device. The first thing to check is under the main page, we'll see that squeeze light is not running uh, by comparison to a working unit that should be running. The reason for this is because we have to set up the correct audio output first. So coming to squeeze light settings, 
Now for a normal Raspberry Pi with a 3.5 millimeter jack, we'd leave this on headphones, but for this, we're gonna change it to USB audio. Hit save. And then hopefully if we get back here, we should be able to hit the ALSA mixer button and see information about what sound level the device is at. If we hit main page, we can try to restart squeeze light with the new settings and now it's running. In our Logitech media server, we should find that the new device, uh, in my case, it's this Pi Core player one, shows up automatically in this drop-down menu. Your devices do need to be on the same network in order for this to work. For most of you, I would suspect that won't be a problem and it's just already shown up. But if yours didn't, check to make sure that they're on the same subnet and that they can talk to each other. Uh, if there's some reason they can't talk to each other, or if they're on different subnets, then they won't find each other. Queuing up a track to play on this, we should hopefully be able to hear that playing out of our speakers. This volume control here actually functions independently of the volume control for the DAC itself. So if we come back to the Raspberry Pi page, and once again under the squeeze light settings, hit this ALSA mixer, we'll notice that despite me turning this volume down, these values are still set the same. This is something Logitech Media Server lets you do that's actually very convenient from an audio con or a volume control perspective, but it's something to keep an eye on. Uh, also, by default, these are not actually at their maximum. So if your speakers aren't quite loud enough, you can slightly increase this by setting it all the way up to zero instead of the negative 1.32. Now is also a good time to come here and change the name of the player. If you're going to have multiple of these being controlled by one Logitech media server, it doesn't make sense to have them all called Pi Core Player. I'm going to call these office speakers because I plan to leave them here in my office to play music. Make sure to hit the save button in order for that to take effect. We should see then in Logitech media server, we might have to do a refresh that our name changes to match whatever we just set. Now I found that some USB audio cards will time out at some point if they've been on for too long. Uh, at least I had one cheap one where it would run for a couple of days and then for no apparent reason, the Pi would send audio to the USB card, but the USB card just wouldn't output anything over the speakers. So I did find a trick to this that I thought I'd share. Uh, I don't know how necessary this is. You sort of have to test your system and see if you run into this problem. But if you do, if you come to the tweaks tab and then go all the way down towards the bottom, you can schedule a cron job. So what I'm gonna do here is I am going to set the Pi Core player to reboot. So full, like power off the Raspberry Pi and power it back on. That means the USB card installed on it will also lose power and restart itself. Uh, if you just restart squeeze light, your USB card won't lose power. So full reboot. And then we are gonna set this to, I think I'm gonna set this to like hour four, which would correspond to 4 a.m. Chances are you just wanna pick whatever hour is a time that you aren't going to be using this. Hit save. This is going to automatically start and set up cron. So now if we, oh, we have to wait for it to reboot. Uh, once it's rebooted, we'll see down at the bottom that cron is now running. And with that, the Raspberry Pi Zero speaker setup should be ready to go. Make sure to subscribe and leave a like on this video if you want to see how to program routines into Home Assistant, as well as how to use Home Assistant to control these speakers with voice, because I got that coming up.